Good day, here we are again with another uh, video update for the tropics, another busy day here in the West Pacific, uh, monitoring a super typhoon now, uh, Nanmadol or Mina, and tropical storm uh, Talas. It is the 26th of August 2011, 0730 Zulu, 3.30 p.m. Philippine time, 4.30 p.m. Japan time. Uh, moving straight now to Nanmadol, again, you uh, can see this well-defined line now, it is rapidly intensified over the past 24 hours as it moves uh, very slowly to the northwest just east of Luzon here as you can see that it was last located approximately 120 kilometers east northeast of Palanan here in Isabela 155 kilometers east of Ilagan Isabela or about 200 kilometers east of east southeast of Tugegarao uh, or about 235 kilometers southeast of Aparica Gayan see the maximum sustained winds are now 240 kph gusting to 100 270 uh, moving northwestward at 10 kph see Nanmadol is now a category 4 super typhoon in the Sapphire Simpson scale uh, this is as of uh, 00 Zulu actually uh, we're still waiting for the latest advisory from JDWC it will likely come out around 4:30 uh, p.m. today the today there you can also see the movement here northwest at 10 kph and this is very crucial if you want to avoid the landfall here from Nanmadol. Uh, just showing you the again uh, another version of the visible image you can see another very impressive and yet disturbing image from uh, from the satellite showing you the well-defined stadium effect and also some micro vortices multi vortices near the uh, near the center just above the surface actually you can see those clouds a very powerful storm expansive CDO affecting the eastern coastal sections of Isabella, Cagayan, Aurora there and as I said moving northwestward so definitely we do, we do think uh, Nanmadol will avoid a direct landfall but still damage has already been done and will likely to be uh, those areas will likely to be experiencing typhoon force for the next 24 to 36 hours say the least mainly because of this very slow and actually erratic movement from Nanmadol Another version here showing the infrared image, showing this almost perfect and textbook-like uh, storm. See very uh, well-defined eye, the CDO well structured. Also, those outflow from different uh, channels. You have the polar outflow channel, and also this established south and westerly outflow. You can also see those uh, outer bands uh, actually affecting as far uh, south as the. Uh, uh, central Luzon here and also again those very intense convection now making their way towards the eastern sections of, of northeast Luzon. You can also see Nanmadol enhancing that southwest monsoon bringing in some scattered showers here in Luz uh, ne Metro Manila and also here in Visayas areas. Also showing you again uh, this is the microwave image from Amsray uh, satellite uh, this is taken around 432 Zulu so around three hours uh, and you can see the you know, well-defined eye you can see the eye will actually partially open on the eastern uh, western side and you can see another outer eye will beginning to form you haven't seen that uh, this morning so if this continue to develop we could probably see Nanmadol uh, undertake some sort of eye will replacement cycle within the next two two days uh, just a wild guess here uh, but we'll surely have to keep an eye on this one for because this will definitely have some potential impacts down the road in terms of strength and wind field here. In terms of rainfall amount, this is again showing you this impressive image from Pagasa. This is from Baler uh, radar, weather radar there, and you can see uh, this sort of very defined eye on the radar. You see those uh, expensive wind, uh, uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, rainfall uh, uh, signature here uh, from the Doppler radar. You can see those uh, outer rain bands and inner rain bands making their way across the northeastern coast and as far south actually extending as far south as northern Aurora and into Quezon and also Polilio Island here. Uh, the rainfall amounts generally ra light around uh, 10 millimeters per hour all around the storm quadrants as you can see we still have those pockets of and bands of very heavy rain around 20 to 30 millimeters in some areas and you can also see the heaviest of rains near the eye and you can see kind of defines the eye wall there some very uh, heavy rainfall rates there perhaps around 30 to 50 millimeters per hour there and showing you the other damage at the other side of the storm aside from the rain is of course the wind 
and you can see this wind signature taken around uh, this is I believe uh, yeah six Zulu so and half an hour uh, an hour ago from the satellite use this with, with caution so because this has a lot of, of um, discrepancy with the with the radar and uh, satellite and uh, data readings from the surface but gi giving a general idea you can see the typhoon force winds extends probably as far away as 100 kilometers away from the from the eye but you can see now touching the coast of of Palanan here in Isabella so they are probably seeing some typhoon force gusts right now and you can also see as it moves northwestward this will probably bring those typhoon force winds uh, inland perhaps into Ilagan and especially here in Cagayan as you can see here Santa Ana the town of Santa Ana here jets out forms of kind of a peninsula so it is very vulnerable in terms of wind that uh, wind from from uh, Nan Madol as it moves uh, northwestward as I said uh, areas here will likely see tropical storm to typhoon force conditions for the next uh, 24 to 36 hours and uh, as for Cagayan especially for Santa Ana this will only get worse as Nan Madol moves ever closer to the area and if you extrapolate this a Paris will also likely see some tropical storm to typhoon force gusts uh, within the next 24 hours here and uh, is showing uh, that is why the Pegasa has issued this uh, public storm warning signals uh, this is as of 11 a.m. as you can see signal warning number three for Isabella, Cagayan, Babuyan and Kalayan group of islands number two for Northern Aurora, Quirino, Ifugao, Madin Province, Kalinga, Apayao, Batanes group of islands and signal number one for Aurora, Nueva Vizcaya, Benguet, Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte and Abra again if you if you are in this one of these areas always heed your uh, officials uh, official warnings from Pagasa and your local authority especially for for a possible mandatory evacuation especially those in the lo low-lying areas and moving on to the forecast side of this update you kind of see we are now uh, computer models now converging on a solution moving it westward a little bit actually significantly westward now taking this uh, just east of Taiwan if not over Taiwan as you can see GFS becoming the Eastern outlier here is still predicting this direct and direct cyclone interaction or Fujiwara effect with uh, Talas well in the Western Pacific. But as you can see, most models now taking this um, more on the northwesterly direction. So you can also see some of these models uh, putting that model just offshore of Santa Ana by, uh, by Saturday morning. Uh, as I said before, I don't think uh, Nanmadol will actually make landfall. Perhaps brush the Santana area with with, uh, with strong typhoon force winds there. Another model we use here is the ECMWF uh, or the Euro model. Um, very accurate model here actually uh, in terms of its performance over the years. You can kind of see this very dire and very scary solution for Taiwan actually uh, forecasting this one. Nanmadol to make landfall in the eastern Taiwan area by Tuesday uh, next week here and uh, as perhaps a, a strong typhoon a weakening typhoon at that as it interacts with the mountainous trains here in Taiwan but still very strong and very scary solution for the Euro model uh, as always you, you need to watch the uh, trends and the consistency among the models to accurately predict the movement of the storm as we uh, so now uh, as I showed you earlier, most models actually now taking Nanmadol just east of Taiwan, so we'll have to keep watching that. So what has happened with the continued westward movement is again this ridge, subtropical ridge anchored just southeast of Japan has actually been stronger than thought. Uh, and uh, now Nanmadol is reacting to that by moving more on the northwestwardly direction and as you can see the distance between Nanmadol and Talas has been increasing so we do think this direct cyclone interaction will lessen as the days go on and um, do you think this actually very pose a very possible and very serious threat for uh, for Taiwan here in terms of strength Nanmadol likely to strengthen more as it heads towards the uh, uh, Balintang channel here very uh, warm waters with high ocean heat content continuing we well into the areas sea east of Taiwan um, so probably likely to keep that category 3 or 4 intensity uh, in uh, 
three days time perhaps we can just a little bit as it interacts with Taiwan but uh, still certainly a very powerful and formidable formidable typhoon as it moves northward now as for the forecast from official weather agencies you can see GWC also taking Nanmadol now offshore of Santa Ana by uh, tomorrow morning early tomorrow morning but still remaining a a track and a turn to the northeast by the time it reaches southern Taiwan so avoiding a landfall according to GTWC but still a very big threat for Miyako Islands as for JMA also showing a track just east of Taiwan probably less than 100 kilometers as well uh, so yeah these two agencies now showing a track just east of Taiwan and also Pagasa showing this track actually still expecting Nanmadol to make a landfall here in Santa Ana tomorrow morning so still have to watch that but in terms of medium to long range forecast Pagasa also taking this just east of Taiwan so some uh, some consistency and agreements with the within the forecast agencies in this basin um, now moving on to the other uh, forecast here other storm we have tropical storm Talas uh, never mind the location here, this is outdated, but the maximum sustained wind still 85, gusting to, uh, again showing you the wrong uh, numbers here, perhaps uh, we'll, we'll change that, uh, this is gusting to actually 110 kph, moving at a direction, northwesterly direction, at 20 kilometers per hour, you can see this a uh, very big and expensive cloud shelf and cloud formation the center is actually right over here you can follow the circulation S clouds still trying to wrap around this uh, this center uh, partially cloud covered but uh, not yet under the most intensive convection doesn't have the central dense overcast yet uh, compared to Nanmadol but in terms of convective activity still seeing some burst of very impressive intense convection uh, just east and southeast of the center right over here and as you can see the east uh, western half of the storm still doesn't still lacking some convective activity but we'll still see those uh, bands of convection trying to wrap around itself uh, across the center uh, computer models uh, uh, well I'll move on to that later but uh, showing you the sheer size and scale of Nanmadol and Talas Nanmadol pales in comparison in terms of, uh, of, of size but strength Talas can't match Nanmadol's uh, super typhoon strength here. Um, as you can see, this the distance is now farther from uh, what we forecasted, but about three days ago. So, the direct cyclone interaction or Fujiwara effect will be perhaps uh, less than uh, previously thought. But in terms of Talas here, it's still expensive uh, cloud formation, and also the tropical storm force winds extend as far south as as far north as 200 kilometers, actually away from the center. You can see the eye taken by the satellite about um, seven hours ago see this expansive wind field also this is the eye very big eye actually as it kind of takes a characteristic of a monsoon depression what we've called what we call here you can also see here uh, some expansive wind field of tropical storm strength also expand ex uh, sorry expanding well into the the middle of the Pacific here and also some uh, some effects here for the northern Marianas uh, bringing in some uh, rains and perhaps gusty winds and strong surface well there now as for the forecast still doesn't have the uh, consensus that we want to see among the computer models but the general forecast is for Talas to take on a more northerly track you can see here ECMWF actually again predicting another dire situation for Japan making landfall here in the perhaps Tokyo area by uh, Friday next week September 2nd so tracking towards the Fukushima prefecture perhaps F Fukushima prefecture around the time so very scary solution for that JTWC is also forecasting a track to the north and uh, JMA also uh, tracking this north uh, there so just keep in mind and uh, just carefully uh, monitor this storm here now moving on to the Ad Atlantic briefly here before I end this we still have a uh, hurricane Irene a category 3 ta hurricane but uh, now forecast actually to make landfall here in the North Carolina uh, by uh, by Saturday and uh, moving towards the Northeast so um, very scary situation as well for the for the millions of people tens of millions of people especially here in northern uh, New York metropolitan area so if you have res relatives there uh, make sure you they uh, they uh, monitor this storm very closely and follow the warnings from their official from the uh, from the authorities 
So that is the update for today. We'll have another update tomorrow. Uh, stay safe out there again if you uh, just monitor the typhoon there. Bye-bye.